Welcome again to the Talking Pictures Podcast with hosts Tony Toscano, C.C. Chambers, and Raquel Baldwin-Horton. Welcome back to the Talking Pictures Podcast. You are with C.C. Chambers, and I have the most amazing guest with me that I was so excited when he said yes. Um, It was almost like proposing. It was just that epic of a moment for me. I have James Arnold Taylor, and some of you might know him by this voice. Hey, everybody. It's Johnny Test. Or maybe... Obi-Wan Kenobi here. The force is strong. Oh my goodness. So James has done like how many different cartoon characters? I saw in like your girl. Oh my goodness. You know, it's hundreds and hundreds. I've been uh, very fortunate to be the voice of many different characters. Uh, Marvel characters. Uh, so I'm Spider Man, Silver Surfer, uh, the Iceman, the Human Torch, uh, Magneto, Professor Xavier. The list goes on and on and on. <laughs> how many accents can you do? Gosh, I don't know. You know, um, well, let's see. Now, I'm doing my show here later. It's called Talking to Myself, where I take you through my life as a voice actor, and I do over 200 voices in the show. And there is a particular scene in the show where I do several different accents. But um, let's see. Well, you have, a, you have a British accent like Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then you can, make it, you can make it more Cockney, you see. Or you can make it more of a Liverpool voice, isn't it? It's more of a question then. Uh, so there's just within the, the British voices alone, you can do a lot. And then you've got, you go to Australia, mate, right? Yeah, everything's there. And uh, let's see, uh, French, we could do a French accent or an Italian. Hey, this is a good, yeah? <laughs> There's too many to do. It's fun. Oh, so who, what's been, okay, this is going to be a question everybody's asked you. <laughs> but our show is on a, a gaming network. Right. And so these are people who play games and watch cartoons. Sure. Or, uh, excuse me. My favorite Animation. People. Animation, yes. <laughs> I still call them cartoons. I do, too. Yeah, I mean, I grew on. up with the Hanna-Barbera. Me, I too. Mean, yeah. So, um, what what has been your favorite five characters? Gosh, you know, well, people ask what my favorite is, and I always like to say that because I'm so blessed to do what I do, whenever I'm in a booth doing a voice, I try to make that one my favorite. So I try to put my best into every one of them. So, you know, as far as favorites go, I don't have any, like, specific favorites. I love them all like children. But and they, I most will of say, them are children. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, probably the most popular are, again, Obi-Wan. Johnny Test. Fred Flintstone. Yeah, but they do. Let's see. Who do we got? We've got uh, Leonardo the Ninja Turtle, uh, which is my regular voice. Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank, which is my regular voice. And Titus from Final Fantasy X, which is kind of my regular voice. It's just a little more... Uh, a little more of an attitude. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So the, um, you said Turtle. Yeah, Ninja Turtles. Ninja yeah, Turtle. Leonardo the Ninja Turtle. There was a movie, TMNT, that came out in 2007. Right. And I was Leo in that. And we were supposed to do more of them, but, uh, you know, that's how Hollywood is sometimes. But we had a great time. We had some wonderful voice actors. Nolan North, mm-hmm. who I'm sure your listeners know Nolan because he is huge in video games. And he's, uh, gosh, he's a, he's a voice of, see, this is terrible. I don't even know the, the character he's in, but it's one of the very big shoot 'em up games and stuff. I always do like the family friendly games. Right. I like to do games that my daughter can play with me. She's 11. So uh, Ratchet and Clank is good for that, uh, as well as all the, you know, I voice double for people like Johnny Depp. So I was uh, Willy Wonka in the uh, Willy Wonka game, and uh, and I've been Captain Jack Sparrow anytime he needs a little savvy. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I saw the I saw the Willy Wonka on your card, oh, and yeah. I was like. What did you do, Willy Wonka? With him? And I was thinking, yeah. I was like, I was like, okay, it had to be something in the in something. So animated. with that, the movie was coming out, but they hadn't been released yet, and they needed to do the games, and they did mm-hmm. two different games. It was um, two days of dialogue that we had to do, um, hours and hours, and they gave me 17 seconds of his voice to get the voice down with, which is because they were so secretive about it. So I got all these, I got chewing gum is really gross. Chewing gum I hate the most. See, exactly the same. And then I got, welcome to my chocolate factory. So I just had to like find the little things he was doing. And I, I realized he was pretty much doing uh, Niles Crane from Frasier. Uh-huh. Oh, Frasier. He was doing this with Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in my neighborhood. So I combined them and I got, chewing gum is really gross. <laughs> That that takes a lot of like imagination of to yeah. say it's this and this put together. Yeah, I did a character for Star Wars: The Clone Wars, the TV show, uh, that was O.C. Sobek. He was a bad guy, and uh, Dave Filoni, our director, said, 
what would Christopher Walken sound like as a, as a bad guy? So, you know, I do Chris Walken's voice. Oh, my God, that's just, like, spot on. And w when he's not able to do his voice, I come in, I do it. You know, it's great. And so I took it and combined it with a little Al Pacino. And so we got O.C. Sobek was a combination of the two. So, yeah, you combine voices. Oh, my gosh, that was... <laughs> Christopher Walken was just like, I'm like, that he's here. C.C., it's crazy the way you do the show. You're great. <laughs> Oh, wow, thanks. So well, how did you get started? I mean, I do some voice acting, which, yeah. you know, you really have to change your voice and your dialect and tone. Yeah, you got a nice resonance there to your voice, which not all ladies can do. That's Thank you. Good. Yes. But then I got really um, nasally. <laughs> um, so how did you get started? Well, you know, I always wanted to do this. So since I was four years old, I wanted to be a voice actor. I pursued it. I wanted to do voices in cartoons. Started as a stand-up at 16, and then I got into radio at 17. And that really is how I kind of learned the tools of my trade, the microphone and the techniques and the headphones and the recording equipment. I would lock myself in the production room at night at the radio station, and I taught myself how to use all the equipment. And back then, this is, I'm dating myself. This was, we had reel-to-reels and record players and all of that stuff. So I know, yeah. People I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying our histories are kind of mirrored because I got <laughs> locked in a studio at 17, and actually that's how I got my first radio oh, show. Really? <laughs> See, isn't it great? Yeah, and uh, and I loved radio. I think, you know, people always ask, they go, well, what's the best way to get into voiceover? It's like, well, things like radio uh, and now I, I guess podcasting is just a great way of doing it. Video games are certainly a big up-and-coming thing for people, too. Yeah, and just auditioning, auditioning, making reels. Constantly, yes. Again, yeah, people got to see my show because I have a whole section on that in there, too. And online, like, where can we find you? Do you, do you oh, teach online? Because nice. I know some voiceover actors teach on YouTube or yeah, different ways. Yeah, well, I have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So people can go to YouTube slash user slash James Arnold Taylor. It's a long name, I know. Man with three first names. Uh, James Arnold Taylor. Or you can go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com and follow all the links. But uh, I have a YouTube channel there, and I teach about voice acting and stuff. I take you into my home studio. And then I'm also going to start doing some satellite classes where you can actually work with me one-on-one -on -one online. Uh, those will be coming up this uh, later in the year or the beginning of next year. But uh, as far as uh, my show, you can watch my show online, too. You can go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com, click on the stage show button, and, uh, and then you can... Uh, See the show there in its various forms, which I've done for uh, Star Wars Weekends and Star Wars Celebration and many others. And uh, I sense a disturbance in the full CC. Oh, yes. We, we have a very handsome uh, knave that has joined <laughs> us here, Mr. Chancellor Pye. Hey. Good to see you again, James. Well, good to see you as well, sir. Hi, sorry, I'm late. I, as you can see, I'm lucky. He's, you, if you all could like see you, this. It looks like you had a, a, a nice night out at a gig nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a gun in one side. Is that a lightsaber there, yes? That's actually a flashbang. Oh. <laughs> I wish it was a lightsaber. Yeah, it looks like a lightsaber, and it's got a little blue on the end, so it's like, all right. You got alligator it's, buttless it's chaps blue, on. Blue, place. okay, yes, yep. not red. Don't go to the dark side. No, never. No, never. never. <laughs> all right. So, um, here, tilt that. Nice. So, oh, we have been having the most fantastic talk. Yes. Do, do the walking again, do the walking again. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's Chris walking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he comes in, he does his stuff. He's crazy. He's good, you know. The show's good. I could use more cowbell. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just like yeah, over so the moon. Now that's that's a thing that voice actors do is we double celebrities. So when the celebrities aren't available, I come in and fill in for them. So from Christopher Walken to Michael J. Fox, well, wait a second, Doc, you mean to tell me about the time machine? Head of a DeLorean and Christopher Lloyd. The way I see it, Marty, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Oh, my God, that's perfect. <laughs> uh, or, uh, let's see, uh, Gilbert Godfrey, that's a nice, quiet voice. I like to do Gilbert when I'm in, like, a library. You know, it's very good. Um, so, let's see, who else? Uh, well, there's Paul Reiser. You know, and I don't do a lot of Paul Reiser anymore, but when I did, I was always filling in for him. Uh, there's Ewan McGregor, of course. There's Jay Baruchel from How to Train Your Dragon. So, if Jay is not able to do his voice, I uh, I come in and I do his voice, and it's uh, very cool. And uh, Christopher Mintz Plasse, who is uh, McLovin in Superbad. Yeah. You know? yeah so, uh, uh, Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake's voice is very similar to mine. It's just a little more hipper and cool. Right. But it's just right there. And so, yeah, so. 
So it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, my goodness. So I, I had this flashback. I think I've watched some of your shows on YouTube. Your, yeah. Your desk, you have a window in your studio, don't you? Ah, uh, well, yes, yes. Yeah, I remember. Oh, good, yes, yeah. So, yeah, YouTube, uh, James Arnold Taylor. You can see all my different uh, little videos. You can see my stage show there. You can see, uh, uh, you can learn about voiceover. You can see this con. I'll be, uh, you know, I'm taking my camera around and stuff, too, so I'll put that up later. Oh, wonderful. So what is, leave us with, like, What's your next thing? Can you talk about it? Did you sign an NDA and oh, can't talk about it? Uh, Voice actors' me. lives are full of NDAs, yeah, non-disclosure agreements. So um, what can I talk about? Well, Guardians of the Galaxy is out. That's mm-hmm. been out now for a while. But I play Yondu in that, and it's fun. I was in a car with Michael Rooker <laughs> earlier, <laughs> and he found out I was Yondu. And so he said, do your Yondu for me. And I did it. And he goes, no, that's not right. Do it like this. So he taught me how to do Yondu, which was very cool. That's awesome. Um, you can't get better than that. And I'm also Cosmo, the Russian telepathic cosmonaut dog. And that show is good. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, as far as the, there's a new Disney show that's coming out I can't talk about. I can't give the name yet or anything. But in that one, I uh, play a, a character very different from my regular voice, and I'm very excited about it. It's a lot of fun. You have a regular voice? I'm stretching the cords a little bit, huh? I'm trying to figure it out. Yes. I'm yeah. thinking your wife must be like, who am I going to bed with yes, tonight? Yes, uh, she likes Obi-Wan Kenobi. She likes that. Oh, voice. yes, yes. <laughs> it's dashing. It's impossible but, not to like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I found that you could be fugly and have a smooth British accent and get laid. <laughs> Every day. How do you think the entirety of the UK history has pulled it off? Oh you know, darling, goodness. in the 60s, <laughs> bad teeth were not a thing. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, no, it's fun. Uh, so uh, there's, uh, there's a lot coming up. I'm trying to think of what I actually could talk about, though. I... I uh, there's some new video games. Oh, they did just announce the world of Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. where I'm uh, reprising my role as Titus from Final Fantasy X in that. So uh, that'll be out soon. So. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it's fun. It's good. Uh, and there's uh, all sorts of Marvel ones there. Uh, the leader, I play the leader. He was on Hulk and the Agents yep. of Smash. He might have some cameos on Avengers or something soon. So I just want to bask in his essence. <laughs> the whole time. very kind. I know. That's just... <laughs> like, if, if you could be a shower setting... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I probably I would use all the time. Oh my goodness! We're like stroking like your ego. Bass. Boy, no, it's so. Oh, and you can hear me regularly on Fox if you watch Fox and uh, Sunday nights, and you hear that voice that says, "The Simpsons coming up next on Fox." That's the That's little, awesome. Little I'll be like, I know him. <laughs> That's right. You can say that. <laughs> so there you go. So is, was that like a one cut gig, or is whenever they change up a new lineup, you have to hop in and? I am in there. Uh, yeah, at least uh, a couple times a week. So that's a good gig. It's a fun yeah. one. So anytime there's a change in so it. So that's the office, pretty much. Yeah, I do it at my home studio. So oh, nice. I patch in on the ISDN line, and uh, that's sounds like I'm right there in the studio with them. Yeah. And I just do the the promos as they, they play them down for me. And then, you know. I... He's got a wicked setup. I've seen it on the YouTube. Yeah. Uh, on the YouTube. <laughs> on the YouTube. On the line. Yeah. On the YouTube. It's a Utah the thing. Call. We call it the. the. YouTube. The, the, <laughs> That's right. the YouTube. The YouTube. I'm on the, I'm on the YouTube. Yeah. yeah. You got to get on it. It, it just sounds old. <laughs> just, <laughs> That's the point. Just, Shut up. <laughs> it's funny to call it that. Well, Back in my day, we didn't call it YouTube. We had we the YouTube it. and the, uh, we had a VCR and the Betamax. And, and that yeah. damn Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you have another um, appointment coming up. I gotta go talk about Marvel superheroes. It's a it's a tough life I have. Uh, did you? How do you do? How do you do? How do you get out of bed? How do you live? <laughs> it's very hard. I know it is. No, I'm I'm very fortunate and I'm very aware that I'm one of the luckiest people in the world to do what I love. So that's what I always try to do. I wrote a book called uh, JAT 365, JAT being James Arnold Taylor, 365 days, every day a uh, positive um, thing for you to read. And so it's uh, different uh, inspirations for you because I think everybody needs to pursue their dreams. Yeah. So people can check that out and uh, they can find it on my website. So. so one more question. Do you ever talk to yourself and answer in a different voice? I guess I do. You know, I didn't realize like have two characters have a conversation? That. Yeah, I will when I'm going to a session or something and I have to be somebody. I will uh, talk in a different uh, a different voice. Yeah, I, I, might, I might be Michael J. Fox talking to Jay Baruchel and, uh, you know, it's, it's very... Or, or Jack Nicholson talking to Christian Slater because basically they have the same voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And I hope we stay in touch. Yes. And, um, on the Twitter. On, on the Twitter. On the Twitter. <laughs> on the Twitter. On the Twitter. And um, maybe you'll be back for Fanex. I, I will see. Yeah, if they Fanex invite me. Fanex doesn't exist anymore. I, I will drop that Oh, hint. is it gone? It's no. gone. Fanex doesn't exist. <gasps> Not anymore. No. Then I won't be here. No. Uh, I guarantee however, it. Uh, it's been slotted with Gaming Con. Oh, that's right. They, yep. they, they combined. 
wherever they, I'm like a vampire. I need to be invited first. Well, Dan's <laughs> going to be here later in the day, so I will, like, go. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Which, I mean, we could totally pull you off for Gaming Con. That oh, makes yeah. sense. Ratchet and Clank, Final right. Fantasy X, Siphon Filter. And if they don't pay for your all hotel, I've games. got a spare room. No, Just saying. Kind. You can talk to the cats and maybe get them to do things uh, okay, that I can't. That's right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Thanks for joining us for this fantastic episode of the Talking Pictures Podcast. I am Cece Chambers. Chance LaPray, who came late. And, of course, Obi-Wan Kenobi saying, may the force be with you, always. <laughs> So there's a million different movie review shows out there, especially on YouTube. But you know what? None of them have me, Cece. I'm part of the TalkingPictures.tv crew with Raquel Baldwin-Horton, Tony Toscano, and in case you don't know, Tony, he's won an Emmy. My show, I'm available on Vimeo and YouTube. It's called Digital Down Low. Now have a seat, watch my videos, like them, and help me get out of my closet and into a professional studio. wondering what to watch this weekend? Yeah, you can look it up on YouTube or you can stay tuned right here and listen to Talking Pictures Podcast. That's right, Talking Pictures Podcast. We are the sister show to the Emmy Award winning television show. You can also find us at www.talkingpictures.tv. Welcome again to the Talking Pictures Podcast. We are here at Comic-Con recording with the fabulous Ruth Connell. Hi. <laughs> and? The equally fabulous Tony Toscano. Absolutely. 2016. It is a terrific convention so far. We're here on the last day. And uh, we're sitting with, uh, you know, I adore redheads, by the way. They're just. Look at taste. Um, they're volatile and wonderful. Um, so Ruth, you're you're an actress, producer. You do you do everything. Yeah, I tap dance as well. How nice! <laughs> That's how I started, really. Um, <laughs> you got started in dancing, mm -hmm. and um, then you you went to uh, the London Academy for uh, spoke or voice and drama or something like that. I went to Rose Bruford, in, um, which is the same college Gary Oldman went to. He's probably our most famous alumni. And it, really, I went there because Tom Baker had gone there. Tom Baker the, doctor. from Doctor Who, yeah, I, I knew Tom. He yeah. was here. Yeah. No, he wasn't ever here. He was here back in the 70s. Oh, no, um, I was thinking of, um, I could see his face, he's younger. Yeah, we had done a reunion for the, I think, the seventh voyage of Sinbad. Okay. With him and, and, the, and the cast. It was amazing. Yeah. Great my, guy. Well, my boyfriend at the time was really into Doctor Who, and um, we were listening to uh, Tom Baker's autobiography, uh, the audiobook, hmm. and uh, he spoke about Rose Bruford, and um, when I turned up to audition, you know, I could see the lake he'd mentioned, and, and uh, it was a place for me. I loved it. <laughs> you never forget your first doctor, that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I knitted a scarf when I was about seven or eight years old. I knitted a big, long, gigantic scarf. That was my attempt at becoming Doctor Who. So have you made the, the jump across the pond, as it were? Are you living here in the in yep. United States? Yep, Los Angeles. I live in L.A. And <laughs> I film in Vancouver, and my house is in London, and my family's in Scotland, so I'm... Yeah. A bit dyspraxic. You're like a peanut butter sandwich. You're just kind of spread <laughs> out spread. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. What a beautiful brogue. What a beautiful accent oh, you thank have. Thank you very much. I can't uh, help it. Well, no, and you shouldn't. <laughs> just been uh, waiting for her. She had three people. I love your accent. No. It's, for, it's funny. The further away from home you go, the more appreciated you are. <laughs> it's true. Uh, do, you, um, uh, do you do a lot of voice work with... I do a, a fair amount of voice work. I don't, um, I don't spend a lot of time focusing on it, but it's something that has kind of come to me, and I love it. I love being in a sound booth. To me, it's one of the purest forms of acting. You've got nothing to lean on apart from the energy that's in you. The, and the, the, the voice, the, the microphone is like a truth detector. You can just <laughs> tell when it's not on or at, you know right um, so I, I find it challenging but I love it you did Merida right yeah I'm the, I'm the Disney Pixar's official voice match for uh, Merida so I've I've done various uh, recordings and I love I love I take my shoes off when I play Merida stands and go with my shoes off and I 
get feisty and I love it. Wow. You know, I think I, I think that's where I met you because I did the junket ah. for for uh, um, be, uh, what? Brave. Uh, yeah, for uh, for the movie. Ooh, I got to shut this down. Um, you you'll edit that, won't you? Yes, I will. Just turn it back. Sorry. Uh, and and there was quite a search for the voice of Meredith. Yes, and Kelly McDonald plays her in the movie. I, as I said, I'm the voice match. Um, but I met the director of Brave um, the night before he won the Oscar. He was wearing his kilt at a BAFTA event, and I said, oh, yeah, I like your kilt. And it turned out he was the director of Brave, and I, I, I said to him, I'm, I'm, I'm the voice match. I just did a recording, you know, I just did a commercial with Meredith, and I said, it's saved my life, it's paid my rent. <laughs> and I really thanked him, and he, so I've got a lovely picture of uh, the director. There's a lot of, obviously, there's a lot of actresses in, in L.A. all vying for something, but... Is it true that the differences that are, are what directors look for there? It seems like everybody seems to be the same, They're the same blonde, the same brunette. Mm. But if you have something that you can bring on that's different, mm. that sets you apart, is that true? Um, I've, I've always been told, <laughs> when I was younger, I think I would sometimes feel other than, and people would say, oh, you're unusual. And sometimes it's a kind of backhanded <laughs> compliment. And I really, as I get older, I only see it as an advantage because, um, as an actor, that you know, that's what you have to offer is your interpretation, you know, your take through your perspective, and I think, you know, um, it's a lesson in, in being yourself and um, and being authentic within yourself, and that seems to be the thing that resonates with viewers. Like, mm. you know, it's not. I don't even think it's more complicated than that. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Yeah, it's true. You're unusual. Mm. You're a character. <laughs> Um, so we have a lot of Supernatural fans. We do. Mm. Um, They're the best fans, right? Yeah, right? I, I, I host, always I host, when I need the information, yeah, it escapes yeah. me. I hosted the panel last uh, for Fanex. I know. Oh, we, we also invite... Who, uh, who was here? Was Osric was here? Who yeah, uh, Osric. Uh, I'm trying to think of the... Oh, what is her name? It just escapes me, too. She's such a beautiful girl. Ken Morellino. Um, no, she played... Uh, She's not on the show anymore. She played like two different roles. I'll She's look a it witch. Up. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, we're just totally enamored with you. We can't I know, think. It's like a little. <laughs> so um, while she's doing that, you've done stage, you've done film and television. What genre gives you the most joy? Oh, I think it's it's the experience in the moment with the people you're working with. So that can be in any. In any genre, it can even be like in a corporate role play room. <laughs> you know, you do all kinds of things as an actor to to, to get by um, on your on your journey. Um, so really, even in a workshop or a class, uh, that's the joy. That's the joy and the pain of acting. You can be on a massive set having a terrible time, or in your bedroom reading with a friend and it's going really well. Um, so really, it's it, it's not about the the, mm. the avenue. It's it's about the, the energy between the, the people you're working with. And, and a group like Supernatural, I mean, oh, that's, that's a, you, you're you're lucky to get a cast like that. Yeah, and it's you know it's because of the way that Jared and Jensen are that it filters down and. And really, I honestly don't think people stick around long if they're not of the same ilk or mindset because it's just, you know, the, the guys are great and if, you know, if you don't want to have a good time, you don't have to be there. <laughs> so, you know, you may as well have a good time when you're there and they're just wonderful. They're so, they're wonderful. I can't, was, I can't speak highly enough of them. What, yeah. you see, what you see about them is all true. They're just, uh, I adore them. I would do anything for them. It was Erica Carroll that was here. Oh, yeah. Eric, see, Erica's the reason I'm here. She's one of my best friends. Her birthday's the 10th of April. I'm the 20th, so. April people. Astrological twins. Um, and what's next? I mean, uh, are, are you are, are you producing? Do you, do you have a, everybody has a script? It seems. Mm, um, I I've got two independent films coming out. One's called Harakiri, which is premiering at the New Orleans Film mm -hmm. Festival, which is really quite a big one. So we're yes, really yes. thrilled. And my friend, one of my besties, Henry Alberto, made it. And um, my other friend, Nadia, has made a film called For the Love of George, about a woman's obsession with George Clooney. So I just filmed that last week. Mm. And that will be coming out next year. And I'm filming Supernatural, so I'm, I'm busy. I, I would eventually like to direct, actually. Now, is this the last season of Supernatural? No. The, the, you keep hearing no. rumors saying, eh, it might be. No. As long as, 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 long as you're on it, yeah. we'll watch it. I think it's good to go. I, I'd love it to go on for you know a few more years. I, I, I'd love it to get to 300 episodes. That would be an incredible milestone, huh. I think. See, I love where you're from. I love, I, uh, well, I, of course, I love Scotland, but where you grew up was, was London. And one of the greatest interviewers of all time, Parkinson, 
Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, I grew up. I, I grew up in Scotland. Actually, I oh. went to drama college. In ah. But um, Parkinson. That's you know, I used to watch Billy Conley. Yeah. Who played? Who plays Merida's dad? And we're brave. Uh, and he, he's also called Fergus. So my son in Supernatural is called Fergus, and um, the dad in Brave is Fergus. But um, yeah, I, I mean, for me, watching these Hollywood people on Parkinson is honestly really did inspire me. In, on my journey to come to America, for yeah. sure. And it's great training for this because because it's you don't want to open and honest and, and asking questions seems like a, a trite thing to do, but it's how we get to know each other. Absolutely, and I think um, yeah, I think good interviewers are like gold dust. You know, um, you guys are doing a good job, right? Thank you. Wow, quite a lot of, of me just. Now. We're not quite <laughs> much. We're putting that on our resume so that we just got a compliment from her. <laughs> nice. Yeah. What's the worst piece of advice anyone's ever given you about your business? Um, to hurry up. That um, you've got to get on with it. There's no time. <laughs> I think any kind of pressure like that is, can I say bullshit? Yes. You know? Yeah. I'm anxious about stuff, so I think that was actually really counterintuitive um, advice and. You know, I'm being successful at an age. Most people have, have been told, most actresses have been told to retire. So I just think it's all BS. I think things How old happen. are you? I can't believe you asked me that no, question. No, I would, I would never ask that. <laughs> I, you, you could do hand gestures, I you won't know, You know how old she but, is? But She's beautiful. Point. That's how old no, she is. No, but really it's a serious point because there's a big um, campaign that SAG are doing just now because on the internet it's like, first thing people do is an interview is say, say your name and your, they label you your age. And again, it's BS because in our business, women are so judged. Um, mm-hmm. Really, they are. And SAG are like, no, it's, this is not okay. This is, like, you, it is uh, what's the word? Discriminative? Discriminatory? It's discriminatory. discrimination and yeah. gender discrimination. Because uh, yeah. men get to... This is one of my big things. And exactly. reason why I, yeah. I ask is it's kind of a point. Because yeah. um, I do a lot of auditioning. And they're always for parts that are for younger people. And I'm like, okay, first off, a woman in her 20s wouldn't know how to do close combat, wouldn't know how to fight to f- defend her children like that, wouldn't know these things. Well, it's, it's, I mean, my friend recently had an audition to play a, a menopausal woman. She's 42. And it's like, okay, really that should be an actress who with more maturity playing that. I got, I got put up for a role of a glamorous grandma and I thought, wow, you know, I don't even have a child yet myself. And then Hollywood thinks it's cool for me to be, to audition to play a grandmother. Yeah. Right. I mean, I play, I'm playing a grandmother, but I'm also playing a 365 year old witch, you know, it's fantasy, you well, know, yeah. it's sci-fi. Right. It's, but it's, you're, that's, that's, that's a like, fantasy thing. Yeah, and it's nonsense, it's nonsense. But that also has to smart. I mean, when, when I interviewed Michelle Pfeiffer, um, and she was now getting the roles of grandmother. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, she she's still one of the most beautiful oh, women in the world. Listen, listen, there's nothing wrong with playing a grandmother. I, nothing wrong with playing a mother or anything like that. But I'm I'm saying that um, in Hollywood, you know, they're looking at you at the age of 38 or whatever, and. Yeah. It's like already they're kind of putting you into... You've got to be so young in Hollywood is the point, right? Yeah, you have to be very young or very old. And very thin. Or, be, or very male. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, there's yeah. Nine, there's nine jobs for every one female job. And two that's of, what two, we're up against. Yeah, so. two of the roles that I got, I got that were male roles. Exactly, yeah. and that's what um, Helen Mirren's point is, which I love. So the BBC recently in Britain promised to make... Um, I think by 2017 that 50% of roles would be for women. Now, this is the, the BBC, which is paid for by the public. I'm like, well, the population is 51% female. Why Why is this even a thing that this doesn't happen right now? And so Helen Mirren's point is, like, if there's somebody called Terry, a guy called Terry, just make it a woman called Terry. Yeah. You know, just, just change the name and you'll get an appropriate reflection of society. Gosh, I've, you've got me on my political high horse. No, and I, it's... There's all kinds of, you know, age discrimination, you know, against all kinds of people. And I just, I'm, it's good to be conscious of it. And I love that SAG are making it a thing. Just now you can go online and add your, add your, your vote or opinion, as it were, to the, to the campaign, which I certainly have done. Well, Thank we you. know your time is absolutely sure. Thank you so much for giving us a piece of it. And you're going back uh, outside to sign autographs. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's doing been, stuff. I've, I've just I said I changed my flight. Um, I'm staying an extra day in Salt Lake. I love really? it so much. Yeah. Let's oh. take you out to breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I'm going to see the Mormon choir. So uh, We we'll know two of time. them. Okay, cool. We'll give you a Mormon uh, <laughs> duet. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I- the Talking Pictures podcast is produced by Talking Pictures Productions. Produced by CC Chambers. Find us at www.talkingpictures.tv 
Talking Pictures podcast distributed by Geek Factor Radio. Also on SoundCloud, Libsyn, and iTunes. Music and sound effects provided by bensound.com. A movie podcast should have more than just rolling on about the recent movies. It should also have stories, background, maybe hosted by an Emmy Award winning movie critic. We have that on the Talking Pictures podcast. 